Hello and welcome back to Vizura Recaps. The film begins in West Virginia, presenting us to our protagonist, Marcos Logan. He is shown explaining the lyrics of his favorite song to his beloved daughter, Sadie. Marcos is a former football player who lost his leg during a high school game. He presently works on building projects in the tunnels beneath the Charlotte Motor Speedway. He is incredibly close to his daughter, but he only gets to see her once a week because she lives with her mother, Bobby. The couple parted years ago, and Bobby now lives with her wealthy husband, Moody, and their two sons. Marcos is doing his regular shift at the construction site when he is summoned by his manager. The latter has just learned of Marcos's leg injury and fires him for being a possible liability. Following that, Marcos drives to his sister Melly, a professional hairstylist. She is in charge of getting Sadie ready for the forthcoming beauty pageant selection contest. However, when Marcos arrives, he discovers that Sadie's presentation was the day before, not today, as he had assumed. After messing up, he goes to speak with his ex-wife, who is furious, but Sadie is more forgiving. During their talk, Bobby tells that they will shortly relocate to Lynchburg because Moody is preparing to start a new auto dealership there. Marcos is plainly distressed since he does not want his daughter to move so far away from him. He then understands he will need a large sum of money to employ the best lawyer to handle this issue. Later that evening, Marcos visits a club owned by his brother, Clyde, a former war veteran who lost an arm and now wears a prosthetic. The two then discuss their concerns and think that the Logans had been cursed. Their talk is abruptly interrupted by the arrival of a snobbish NASCAR team owner, Max Chilblain, and his two guys. Max aggressively mocks Clyde's infirmity, infuriating the brothers. As a result, Marcos engages in a confrontation with the gang members, while Clyde goes away and burns Max's pricey car. Following this, Marcos refers to his brother as Colaflower, a code word they used when they were young boys to perpetrate crimes. The next morning, while eating breakfast, Clyde questions Marcos about why he used the code phrase. Marcos then discusses his plans to rob the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Despite Clyde's initial reluctance, Marcos continues to describe every aspect of their target area. It turns out that while digging in the tunnel, he discovered a very safe money storage system that employs pneumatic tubes to transport large sums of money to a physical bank vault. To successfully carry off the robbery, they must blow up the bank vault, which only Joe Bang, a jailed safecracker, can do. The brothers then pay Joe a visit at the prison. As they discuss their strategy, Joe laughs, wondering how he will pull off the theft while in jail. However, the trio promises him that they can get him in and out of prison undetected. Joe accepts on the condition that they enlist his dim-witted younger brothers and the mission. As a result, the Logan brothers proceed to the Easter Fair to recruit the Bang brothers for the theft, Fish and Sam. Furthermore, Marcos and Clyde include their sister Melly in their strategy. As part of their scheme, Clyde purposefully crashes a car through a shop window, resulting in a 90-day sentence. Following this, Joe and Clyde begin to collaborate in the prison, enlisting the assistance of some other inmates to help them escape. Outside, Marcos and his sister keep a tight eye on a prison distribution van, noting the precise date and time it leaves the prison. Sam and Fish, on the other hand, use painted cockroaches to infest the Speedway's tube system in order to establish which tubes go to the actual bank vault. Marcos comes upon a healthcare worker named Sylvia, who happens to be his high school classmate. When she notices an injury on his forehead, she brings him to her van and gives him a tetanus shot. Marcos does not have a job so he does not have the money to pay for it. Sylvia, on the other hand, says that she does not require money. Her organization relies on affluent individuals to donate. The following day, Marcos returns to his prior employer under the ruse of retrieving his remaining belongings. During this, he goes into his boss's cabin and steals a Speedway blueprint. On his way out, he bumps into his supervisor, who expresses regret at having to terminate him. Marcos expertly shifts the conversation implicitly inquiring about the progress of the current building work beneath the speedway. In response, the supervisor informs him that the job is being done ahead of schedule, which marks a significant shift in Marcos's heist strategy. Now, the theft must be carried out one week sooner, which coincides with the season's biggest race, the Coca-Cola 600. It appears to be the busiest race, making the robbery more difficult to carry out. Despite the setback, Marcos refuses to abandon the mission and communicates the new strategy to the rest of his team. Finally, the highly anticipated race day arrives and the theft begins. During lunch, Joe pretends to be unwell and vomits all over the canteen. As a result, he is rushed to the prison's infirmary where he can relax. Shortly later, he asks the nurse for permission to use the restroom, but she suggests he use the urinal. 
Joe hesitates, but Clyde walks in and takes him there. Meanwhile, at the dining hall, Joe's inmate, Numun, picks a fight with another prisoner, resulting in a riot. This prompts the warden to lock all of the facility's doors, preventing anyone from fleeing. Amidst the chaos, Joe and Clyde escape the prison via a concealed toilet tunnel. They then conceal under the delivery vehicle with wooden cases before leaving the facility. When the truck stops at a petrol station, the two get out and head to a rendezvous spot. Melly picks them up, and the three travels to the speedway. Meanwhile, the Bang brothers blow out a cell tower in the racetrack stadium, blocking all credit card machines and forcing vendors to accept cash only. As a result, the cash transactions begin to climb rapidly, and all personnel in the stalls are directed to continue passing money to the vault via pneumatic tubes. Joe and Clyde arrive at the raceway and proceed to the basement, where Marcos awaits them. Following that, the three of them enter the tube room, where Joe uses his chemical knowledge to build an improvised bomb. He then carefully places it in an empty capsule before launching it via the tube. When the bomb detonates, it opens the gate connecting the tube to the vault. However, smoke begins to emerge from the other tubes, as noticed by the sellers. They quickly notify authorities, who assign two officers to investigate the vault and the basement. In the meantime, the robbers attach the tubing to a massive vacuum pump and begin sucking up all the money into garbage bags. During this operation, Joe accidentally swallows out Clyde's prosthetic limb, making him paranoid. Fearing that the robbery is linked to him, he begins looking for his arms. Marcos manages to calm him down by assuring him that he will get his arm back. After filling numerous bags with money, Sam and Fish load them onto a baggage-loading vehicle and head out to Marcos's truck. However, they encounter a difficulty along the way. The gate fails to open. Just when it appears like they are about to be apprehended, Marcos arrives and assists them in opening the gate, allowing them to drive away. In the meantime, two cops observe smoke emerging from the pneumatic tube ventilation chamber. They enter the compartment and find Earl, one of Clyde's bar regular, smoking a cigarette. Mistaking him for one of the workers, the officers tell him to put down the cigarette and return to work. Concurrently, the Coca-Cola 600 race begins. Max is among the spectators who passionately support his new driver, Dayton White. Dayton performs admirably for the first several minutes, but he quickly loses control of his car and crashes into one of the barricades, eliminating him from the race. Afterward, the irate Max shouts at him for his recklessness, accusing him of causing him to lose a large quantity of money. In the midst of their quarrel, Joe and Clyde emerge from the basement after accomplishing their assignment and run into them. Max knows Clyde from the bar, but before the situation can escalate, the latter punches him in the face and runs. Marcos eventually retrieves his brother's arm and leaves the cellar. He gets in his money-filled truck and drives away from the scene. As the scheduled theft time passes, the inmates in the prison activate a fire alarm, alerting the fire brigade. Joe and Clyde take advantage of this opportunity to slip back inside the prison, disguised as firefighters. They instantly return to their prison uniform and resume their former position, behaving as if everything is normal. Following this event, Melly prepares Sadie for her beauty pageant finals. During this time, the young girl asks for her father, but Melly has no idea where he is. Not long after, Sadie approaches the stage, ready to begin her act. Marcos arrives on the scene just before Sadie's performance, much to his daughter's relief. To Marcos's astonishment, Sadie sings his favorite song, Take Me Home, Country Roads. The audience appreciates the performance and ultimately begins to sing along with Marcos in tears. After the concert, Marcos abandons the truck containing the money at a petrol station and contacts the police anonymously. This allows Charlotte Motor Speedway to recoup the majority of its losses and seek insurance for the remainder. This revelation enrages all of the team members, who think their efforts have been in vain. A few months later, Clyde and Joe are freed from jail and resume their usual lives. One evening, Joe visits Clyde's tavern to inquire about his brother. However, Clyde maintains he just knows Marcos has moved to Lynchburg with his daughter and his ex-wife's family. Aside from that, the FBI takes up the robbery investigation, with Agent Sarah Grayson heading the charge. At first, they look into the money storage system but discover nothing suspicious. However, they do have an eyewitness, Max, who describes all he witnessed that day. After learning about the one-armed Clyde, the agents pay a visit to the prison and talk with the warden. However, the warden firmly asserts that no one can escape from his jail, especially when under his watch. Sarah continues to suspect Marcos, Clyde, and Joe, but she lacks proof to back up her claims. Six months pass, but she is unable to find any clues in the case. 
Now that the racetrack president is happy with the recovered monies and insurance compensation, the FBI investigators must shut the investigation forever. One day, Joe is drinking coffee at his house when he discovers a shovel outside. He then digs a specific location and discovers one of the garbage bags full of money, which makes him happy. Here, it is revealed that the money Sam and Fish took out earlier was merely a fraction of what the Logan siblings stole later. They had hidden the excess money in different garbage bags with trackers, intending to recover it later from the dumping place. In the end, everyone participating in the theft, including Sylvia and Numon, gets a large payoff. The closing shot shows the heist crew meeting at Clyde's pub. Marcos also invites Sylvia, with whom he has a love connection currently. As the group celebrates, Agent Sarah steps into the pub and starts a discussion with Clyde, pretending to be new to the area. That was the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more material like this, and please press the like button to assist us. Also, if you want us to recap your favorite movie, leave a comment. Take care until the next time.